And we're back and MPs are heading back to Ottawa on Monday after a summer break from Parliament. So what's coming? There's been a big shift in the last couple of months, hasn't there, in the political polls? But all of them showing the same basic trend. The Conservatives up, the Liberals down, Pierre Polyev up, Justin Trudeau down. Take a look at some of these latest numbers from Abacus Data released late this week, showing the Conservatives 15 points ahead of the Liberals. 41% for them, Liberals at 26%, the NDP at 8%. So how much trouble is the government in? By the way, the Prime Minister this week indicating the next federal election is likely two years away in 2025. That's a long, long time. Let's bring in our front bench. Maria Monsef knows that well. Two years is an eternity in politics. Melanie Paradis, Garatan Singh, Christy Kirkup. Christy, I'm going to start with you. How rough is the fall going to be for the Prime Minister? You know, I think this has been the most challenging political season that we have seen for Justin Trudeau since really he took on um, the, the role uh, as liberal leader, frankly, because, of course, uh, lots of liberals got behind him and saw that sweeping majority um, in 2015. Of course, uh, subsequent elections have uh, brought the liberals uh, minority governments, which was not uh, ideal uh, for Justin Trudeau and the liberals. Uh, but he has he has never seen poll numbers like this. And I think uh, what I will be watching for, and I know a lot of other political observers will be watching for as well, is essentially whether the prime minister has has that fight left in him. It's It's been eight years. And frankly, there's been a lot that has happened in those eight years. Uh, don't forget uh, the, the height of a global pandemic, the war in Ukraine. There have been numerous and, and massive issues uh, that the prime minister has had to contend with. Uh, but he has never seen uh, such uh, a political challenge specifically from the Conservatives. And uh, I think that, um, you know, there uh, there's a lot of anxiety amongst Liberal MPs. And frankly, we saw that throughout the course of the summer. Uh, there was this uh, massive uh, cabinet shuffle that happened at the end of July. Uh, Justin Trudeau really didn't provide an explanation as to why he decided to, um, you know, essentially have this major reorganization of his front bench. And uh, you know, Liberal MPs had been quoted in the media um, anonymously um, expressing their frustrations. And why is that? Well, they're they're hearing it at the doorsteps. They're worried about their futures. Yes, the next election is uh, perhaps two years away if this uh, agreement with the NDP holds. At the same time, though, when you are a political um, animal, you're you're an MP. You, you don't want to see poll numbers like this. And David Coletto, um, the CEO of Abacus Data, ha has said as much. If you're seeing poll numbers like this, like you need to be concerned. And so I think that's what the caucus meeting was really about this week, kind of trying to to bring uh, the team back together uh, to kind of say we need to stay focused on the political opponent of uh, Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives, uh, and and we'll see whether that sticks and whether the caucus is um, you know pleased uh, with the progress that it sees. But frankly, we, we talked about the need for um, action. I, I think that Liberal MPs certainly are, are looking uh, for action and, and they don't want to hear so much mm. pushback um, in their own respective uh, uh, constituencies because um, that, that's not good news for them when, when they're really hearing it, uh, when they're speaking to people on the ground. Miriam, you're a longtime Liberal. Why does it seem, do you think, that many Canadians are turned off right now by Justin Trudeau? It has been an incredibly difficult year for Canadians, but also, uh, you know, it's been a really difficult political season for the Liberals. They've had a really difficult time responding in addition to, you know, uh, the list that Ms. Kirk uh, provided, you know, the pandemic, inflation, a war in Ukraine. There's also extreme climate uh, challenges and don't forget that Trump presidency that you know took took a lot of oxygen out of every room um, and you know moving forward having had this awful summer uh, the challenge that the liberal government will have is going to be showing tangible action on what they have announced the NDP will uh, have the challenge of remaining relevant and pushing the Liberals to continue to come up with solid, practical ideas that provide Canadians with relief when it comes to being able to afford life and being able to feel like government is there for them, government mm. cares, government works. As for Mr. Polyev, he, 
he has had an excellent year. Talk about a honeymoon. Hmm. The numbers are up. He's riding high in the polls. They've had a great convention. The party's behind the leader. The challenge for him moving forward is going to be standing up to the additional scrutiny that is going to come his way for the statements he makes, for the plans that he announces. And, you know, that's wonderful makeover he's had. Will it hold up? Will that nice guy facade hold up and right. will he look prime ministerial or will he just look mean over time yeah and then lastly i will say this todd a, a challenge for the conservative leader is going to be how to respond to that right flank the extreme right that was so instrumental in him getting elected as the party leader and having millions of dollars to roll out important and effective ad campaigns how will he respond and relate to these folks without turning off more moderate Canadians? Mm. And you're right, two years is a long time, if that's how long it'll be between now and the next election, and a lot can happen. Let's get to Melanie. So uh, the worry about a honeymoon uh, peaking too soon for Pierre Polyev, what do you think? Uh, I don't think it's a worry, unfortunately, because the affordability crisis is going to continue. And this is an issue that Pierre Polyev has been uh, incredibly effective at, at hammering on. He's been talking about this since he became, well, since before he became the leader, frankly. And I, I think that he's going to continue to have a, a large audience for that. Th there's two sleeper issues that I think that people should be looking for this fall. And one of them ties directly into this. Home heating is about to go skyrocket in price across the country. If you are on a natural gas, oil, or propane tank form of, of heating for your home, the carbon tax increase that we saw recently, you haven't felt that yet on your winter heating bills. This will be the first winter when, when Canadians are seeing that, that increase. And I right. think it, that's going to be a considerable pain point. So it's not just that groceries are more expensive. It's not just that your mortgage uh, rate has gone up. It's now also that your home heating is, is more expensive, uh, in part because of the carbon tax that, that the Liberals refuse to reduce. And the second item that has not gotten a lot of coverage yet that I'm tracking is the, uh, the the crisis that we had last year in in children's medicine and in pediatrics in, in particular. Everything that that happened last year is set to repeat itself again this year because nothing has changed. Governments have not implemented any of the changes that were needed to shore up our, our supply chains when it comes to um, antibiotics like amoxicillin and the solutions that are needed to, to administer those and uh, like things like children's Tylenol to children. Right um, and and that's, unfortunately, we see another spike in RSV and flu and in COVID coming this fall. Um, I am dreading the fall for my toddler. Um, and I'm really worried that we may see that crisis repeat itself. And as we saw last year, every level of government gets blamed when yeah. something like that goes horribly wrong. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, Garat, and we're going to get you next time, I promise. I want to thank all three of you, all five of you for coming on the show. Thanks so much for this. Much appreciated. Have a great weekend ahead.